track it is one of the additional apps that you can buy this one is a paid one uh, now track it is really good for that sort of detailed reporting and larger teams I'll show you why in a sec but it's, it's better for those organizations like I said before that have multiple staff multiple teams wanting to actually track their hours time sheet at that kind of thing that's where track it really comes into its own Again, that timesheet submission and approval process, it takes some of that HR work or payroll work, makes it really, really easy. You can track billable versus non-billable time. Um, you can report on time across multiple boards. Again, really good when you've got teams working on multiple projects, multiple things, day-to-day -day items, and you're just wanting to track what time they spend where and doing what. Um, this is kind of cool, save combinations. When I first saw it, I thought it was a little bit kitsch, but it's actually pretty cool. So if you've got a staff member who regularly does the same sorts of things or a, a role or a team that regularly does the same sorts of things, you can actually save, they're almost like templates or saved combinations. So you can make it even easier for yourself or they can make it even easier for themselves to you know, actually log their time. Because we know, I mean, and I know I'm the worst at it for logging my own time as well remembering to hit that go button, remembering to hit that stop button, remembering to actually track what it's against. And Paul is laughing in the background there because he's the one that has to chase me up for it every single week. Um, you know, the easier you can make it for someone, the better. And this makes it easy um, for those big teams. You know, you've got mirrored information so you can move from board to board, from workspace to workspace. You can set custom schedules, you can set up workloads, and I'll show you some of that. But first, couple of the cons everything has cons right time entry views can be slow to load now when the implementation specialist when our tech guys told me this I thought oh they're probably thinking slow to load is you know half a second because they are all good but it actually is a little bit slow even for me even when I've got nothing else running on the computer I did find it a little bit slow to load there so I don't think that I think that's an app thing rather than a, a Monday or an internet issue on our side there because a few of us have found that um the track it app when you install it is automatically added to every board uh so be aware of that when you install it it, it goes everywhere uh you, you might want to warn your team especially if you've got any teams within your workspaces that aren't going to be using this and don't know you've got it coming uh you might want to give them a little bit of a heads up if they start seeing it um throughout their workspaces and boards when you go into the item view for something, it actually shows all time logs recorded on items. Now that can be a good thing and a bad thing. It's a good thing because everything's all in one place per item. Uh, not such a great thing, you know, if you don't want certain people seeing what other people have done or teams seeing what other people have done, that kind of thing. So there could be a little bit of a privacy issue there just if you, know, if you do have those sort of Chinese walls in place, as to say. Um, the admin can be a little bit confusing to set up. I didn't even fully get my head around it when I was going through it. Um, I'm more of a user than an admin though, as I said at the beginning. So I'd probably, you know, if I was going to put this into place and if I was doing it, you know, myself within a business, I'd probably book a call with the, with the track it team or book an onboarding call and see if I can get them to run me through it. It is a bit of a con that your pricing does align with your monday.com account size. Uh, so that comes back to it being added to all boards as well there, is that even if you only want to use this for one, two or three of your teams and you've got 10 teams out there, um, everybody gets it. So you don't sort of have a choice of limiting your pricing down to, okay, well, we only need five seats or we only need 10 seats to actually use this. You don't get a choice. It's whatever you, your monday.com account size is. So it could be a little bit more expensive than you need there if you don't need it across the whole organization. All right, little recording I did. Um, this is showing what it looks like. But again, seeing as my internet's running nicely, I might do what I did before and bring it up. All right, so we are on track it. So I'm just going to get rid of the native time tracking one. Track it. All right, so we've set it up fairly similar on each one of these just to show you how it works with a high level board, low level board. Um, go to our main table. This is what we all feel fairly comfortable with. Again, pretty similar to before. We've got our project and then we've got our tasks against hours expected, hours spent. All of that is just your normal Monday stuff, remaining hours. Then over here, you've got your timesheet. Now, again, this is where it's a little slow to load. See, I feel like playing elevator music just for that second. Only a second, but with IT stuff, you kind of expect it to be pretty quick. Uh, if I go back, this will show me. 
There we go. This will show me my timesheet. So this is a custom view. Um, this will show me my timesheet for different weeks or different months. I could choose the whole month if I wanted to. I think, nope, we're on weekly. Oh, we're on weekly. This is where you've got your combinations. So if you know that if you're working on, you know, a task for, for a certain project, you need to have that and that in there. You can save that combination and, there we go, you know, favorite it. You can change it, change the items, that kind of thing. But we're not going to do that right now. So let go of it, please. There we go. All right. So where are we? I'm trying to remember what dates I actually did track something. There we go. I've tracked something there. Um, so in here, back on Thursday the 11th, I tracked three hours against task five. And I set that as a billable. So I can open that up from here. Task five. There it is. Opening up the track it log on that actual item. And there we go. There's that three hours that I put in there. Okay. I can edit it and I can delete it because it's my own. Um, I can filter if I wanted to filter or I can start adding more time to that item, to that project. So that's what it looks like when you actually log your time. You can go back in time and log, add your category, billable, non-billable, fast, whatever it might be. You can add custom categories in there, however many hours it is. So I'll add two hours in there and I will say demo log time. I do have to choose a category. There we go. Nice little hint there if you forget to fill something in and log the time. So we saw that pop up down here and you'll also see that then coming into my timesheet when I bring that back up. So my timesheet lives up here and there's that couple of seconds of radio silence again. There we go. There's that two hours that I just logged today. I can add from here as well if I wanted to. I can find my boards. I can search if I've got lots and lots of boards like I do. You can see here. I can do a search or I can choose a project, choose a sub item if I had sub items there, choose a category, how many hours and write a description again if I wanted to. And that adds that in there. All right. Now I can submit my time sheet to my manager here. So when you are in the admin settings, um, which I won't go into because on this account, I don't have permission into the full admin settings, you can submit your time sheet to your manager, which is amazing. Right, so at the end of every week, you just set yourself up with a reminder to submit your timesheet in and it's done. Um, you can also go back and see reports based on, you know, categories, combinations, all sorts of different filters in there with your timesheet. So you can start to get really granular on that if you want to um, or just use it as a timesheet. The project summary, again, this is back to projects rather than me as a human. I can see here, you know, that on each of these projects, I've still got some time remaining in there of hours expected. We're getting pretty close on project three. Um, so, you know, we've only got an hour left on that one there. Just an example of how you can use it in your dashboards. So go down to the task board, very similar to what I showed you on the native one. Again, we've got how many hours logged remaining hours open up the task and it brings that up that I showed you a minute ago. There we go, where you can log your time or you can see past time. So I can see here that Elena has actually logged, and this is what I said before about that privacy thing, I can see that she's logged an hour of billable time against this task. Everybody can see everybody else's uh, in their time log. Again, this is just us getting a little bit creative with some dashboards. Um, you know, you can see as with most Monday data, you can see everything in so many different ways, depending on how your brain works, how your organization works, how you want to see things. Uh, yeah, I can see, you know, that on March 25th, the week of March 25th, you know, Projects, who is a human in our world, and Lachlan did all the work, and that's how much work they did. Um, I can see that, hey, the week of April the 8th, I did heaps, come on. Uh week of April 15th, it looks like we all took the week off apart from Elena. So you can start to see that sort of, you know, nice breakdown, nice look of, all right, so where's our time going? Where's our, mo from a management perspective, where's our money going? Um, and then you've got your normal timeline type view in here where, you know, you can, you can click through and actually open up the time log. Now the time logs do come with these weird numbers. That's just making them, you know, it's a little unique identifier there um but it's just a nice way of going well hang on a second Anastasia has logged a bunch of time here what is it <laughs> so I can see that it's demo non-billable and everything there
And that's come from there, which are all of our logs in a not so pretty format. Uh, really good if you're exporting though. Really, really good um, if you are, say, sending it through to zero or something like that. Um, you know, you can export that out to Excel just as a table, just as it is. Um, and then that could be really handy for your um, oh, that's a big chunk of work. That could be really handy for your payroll to have there. Workload, very similar to what I showed you on the other screen. If you've got any questions about the workload widget separately, let us know. I won't run right into this, but the idea is if a day sort of looks like this with nothing in it, there's nothing assigned to that person or they didn't actually track any work, but looks like this. If it's blue, they are pretty busy. Light blue with a little, little tiny blue, that means they've done some work, but they are not at their capacity yet. If it starts to turn red, which I don't have any of there, means they are overworked. Uh, but I believe we've even got a short YouTube video on that. So check that out if you want to know more about that. So that's the most um, most of there from sort of this perspective. We won't go right into the admin settings. One, I don't have access on this account, but two, that would take far, far too long uh, to get through all of the admin settings and show you all of the different stuff that can potentially be done. Uh, but yeah, the main the main thing that we wanted to show you there was the timesheet part because I really do think that that is one of the big bonuses uh, of Track It is this timesheet. It it feels intuitive. It feels like what you're used to when you're logging time for a timesheet. So when it comes to your staff and again using things like this, this is easy. You can add time from here. You can add time from from your different items. You can make combinations if you want to, you know, and just submit it straight from here. No exporting, making it into a PDF and sending it on or anything like that. It's just submit straight through. Um, oh, let's have a look in preferences there. We've got, I actually don't know what that is. I tried turning it off and on and it still looked pretty similar. So if there's anybody from Track It on the call, please pop it in the chat. New super amazing time input as a setting. Display options, all your standard sort of stuff of how you want to show things, show weekends or not. Do you want to round up? Do you want to not round up? You know, and then this is all of the different little notifications that you can get along the way, all pretty self-explanatory and all for you as a person or as a user. So this is for the person that's actually tracking uh, the time there. All right. Any questions on track it just yet? No. Everybody's very quiet today. I do wonder whether everybody's eating lunch while we do this. Hey, oh, there we go. I thought we had a question there, but it was actually a video, which I am going to show you now very quickly. Uh, that was Lachlan talking. I, I'd forgotten I asked him to do this. Show me the admin side really nice and quickly. Now, we won't run through the whole thing, uh, but this shows you a quick glimpse of Track It Monday admin access. There we go. Can you guys hear him or not? All right, so you can't hear him, but I can. Um, but this is what the admin side of Track It looks like. You've got all of these different things that the admin person can do that obviously the team members can't do. Capacities, work schedules, approval processes, make other people admin of different teams. So, all right, I'm going to move forward a little bit. No, nope, he's actually going to go over now. There we go. You can change what fields show. You can add those categories that I was showing you before, uh, where we had billable, non-billable, bass. You might break that down even further. You can turn them on, turn them off, that kind of thing. All from there. Make people's work schedules. You can add holidays too. I forgot about that. That's really cool to do automatically um, because even in our own calendars this week, I didn't have Anzac Day in my calendar and I was available. So it's nice to have this automatically added in there. Uh, so you can also change there if people can go back in and edit their own timesheets or not. Um, and you can turn approval on or off. So if you don't need that approval process, just turn it off so that it makes it nice and simple. You can get your big exports there as CSV. Um, and then that's just your account billing stuff. But that is the admin side of things. Um, just as a quick look into that, like I say, there's there's far too much to go through in great detail today, uh, but it gives you a bit of an idea of what you wouldn't have seen when I was running through it live, uh, the bits and pieces that an admin or a manager can actually go in and play with there to make it yours. 
There is an app. I don't have the app to give you a, again, I'm saying I don't have a lot of things here, but I don't have an, the app myself to get on my phone to give you a good look at it. But I did look up quite a number of reviews of it and people say it's great. It's pretty much like I was saying with the Monday Native app, it's pressing buttons or just entering a time against an item or entering it in. And then you can go back, if your admins allow you, you can go back and add more detail, you know, if you need to um, in once you're back on computer or you can add it from here if you're quite comfortable using your phone for it but really easy you can see how much time's already logged you've got a start stop button it's just again easy so if you've got a bunch of bunch of people you want you know, something that is fairly customizable something that is is good for different teams for different levels for billable non-billable hours that's where track it comes into its own and has the the app as well so you're not losing out there